Hello, Vitor Domodorosa. We have the Jund Sacrifice deck against the Jeskai Fires deck, probably the one remaining Jeskai Fires deck, which was the most popular deck in the entire field, uh, with some of the cards that uh, are very key in this deck. He already has the Sphinx of Foresight, uh, which can uh, give him some scries to find some action to go with the Fires, which is already in his hand. He's going to get whatever he wants. Yeah, this is really powerful. Effectively, he gets Scry 6 with Double Sphinx of Foresight. So he's going to be able to set up to make sure he has the land he needs, he has the threats he needs, he has the answers he needs. He's just stacking his deck. He's taking a look right now. This, these are pregame actions. This is a, a, bonif a benefit that you get from having Sphinx of Foresight in your opening hand. And... It looks like he is interested in land number four. He needs that for Fires of Invention. But Bone Crusher Giant and a second copies of Fires of Invention, he says, I can do without those. Who so needs the Shimmer when you stack your deck? That's right. So he can put the Shimmer on the bottom, perhaps. And then there is a Cavalier of Gales that he can use as the follow-up. So currently, if we just sort of play this out naturally, he can go Fires into Sphinx, and then Sphinx plus Cavalier kind of at the minimum. He does, he will still need to find a fifth land. That's right. So he, he chooses not to place Temple of Epiphany because he wants to be able to subscribe to that. He'll just make sure to get that down before the fourth turn. And he'll probably play that on turn three. He also has the ability to keep up Ether Gust at this point. Or just Gust this Goose. That's true. I actually think that Gusting the Goose is not an unreasonable play here. Does give your opponent another food to use with the goose, though. So he may uh, he may decide to possibly just wait on. I was going to upkeep it. Yeah. So upkeep does decide to upkeep it, so his opponent can't just replay the goose. One of the really key things about the fires deck is that uh, you don't have the ability to play spells in your opponent's turn once you hit fires invention. Once you actually have that card in play. So stuff like ether gust, you really want to use in the early turns proactively rather than try and save for big things because you you can't counter stuff later. It is funny just to see a card like Ether Gust alongside Fires of Invention. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the cards. Are, I mean, and this is main deck. Yep. Right. I mean, that, this is this shows. You know, we don't have quite as distorted a meta game as we've had at some of the previous uh, Mythic Championships this year, but we do have a meta game where uh, there are a lot of decks that have key green or red spells or permanents. You know, playing as Fires of Invention, great. Get that out of the way, and that's a huge way you can break serve in the mirror match, which was something that was very much on players' minds leading into this event. Yeah, it's interesting because there's this core of cards that you absolutely have to play in a Jeskai Fires deck, but the rest, you can really just mold it to whatever it is you think might be your best problem, including cards that would normally be a sideboard option like Ether Gust. And here we go. You look over at the hand from Piotr Glagowski. Yes, he is finally going to get a chance to cast Korvold here, but he doesn't have a whole lot else going on, so he's really on Korvold or Bust. Which, but, to be fair, has worked out pretty well for a lot of players this week. Corvold is still really powerful here. Mm -hmm. you know, Corvold does outsize the Sphinx of Foresight. Uh, it, it does uh, potentially outsize a Cavalier of Gales once you start sacrificing things to it. And he may just have a bunch of land in hand right now, but he does have a uh, uh, the ability to cycle through to get a lot of action thanks to the Corvold drawing a card every time he sacrifices something. Oh, there's another Aether Gust. Ooh, that's big. That's really big. He also just has a justice strike if he just wants to get Corvold off the battlefield here. Yeah, the, a lot of powerful options here. The Cavalier of Gales uh, brainstorm effect getting uh, a, a lot of tools for Apollo to uh, react to the Corvold, which otherwise is looking like it could have been a problem, but no longer. So it looks like he's going to put a Fires of Invention and a Hollowed Fountain back on top after the Cavalier of Gales trigger. And he's left himself multiple ways to deal with Corvold now. And it's going to be just a strike. It's actually a singleton copy of Justice Strike and two Aether Gusts in Paolo's main deck. So this is actually all of his, his uh, interaction for large stuff. Look at this. Glagowski activates the uh, Cauldron Familiar from his graveyard to draw a card before Corvold went Finds away. Another and Corvold. found the other Corvold. Ooh. Massacre Girl as well. One, two, three. Not, not quite enough, not enough right now. Not enough. There's also Thrashing Brontodon at the ready here for Glagowski if he'd like to deal with the Fires of Invention on the battlefield. But as is usually the case, 
Paulo Vitor Domitoroso one step ahead with a Fires of Invention sitting safely on top of his library. Not only that, he just has so much pressure in play. The Cavalier of Gales and the Sphinx of Foresight makes spending your turn removing Fires of Invention not really do enough. He's just going to get attacked for nine if he uh, decides to try and remove Fires. And if he doesn't remove Fires well, Paulo just gets to play a bunch of stuff for free. And uh, Piotr definitely taking his time thinking this through. He, his best way to at least stabilize against the board right now feels like it's probably the Corbold. Since he can sacrifice his Cauldron Familiar and at least have a creature that can block the Sphinx and possibly buy him a little bit of time. But again, you know, that, that Fire's Invention, pretty terrifying if it does stay in play. But the, the, the crucial thing is, look at, look at Paulo's board and just think about the cards in his deck. The only thing he couldn't cast is a Cavalier of Flame. He has you know, full mana available to him. Wow, he's not going to play the Corvold. Interesting. He didn't play anything. He just did nothing. Is he just going to make a food with the goose? I wonder what his plan is here. Boy. That's a rough spot there for Glukowski if, if yeah, his entire turn is make a food. Is he planning on block, make a food? Tough position here. And Paulo Vitor is lining up an ether gust, it looks like. He's taking a quick look at the deck list, it looks like. I mean, maybe he's looking to massacre girl, but he, if he massacre girls, he needs something else in play too. Yeah, he does. Oh, no, 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 the food. The food lets him massacre girl this board. The food lets the massacre go to the board with the uh, uh, with sure. the cat. That's what it is. That's his plan. That's right. With the trigger on the stack. Yes. After the cauldron familiar dies. Correct. That is what he's looking to do. Because the Corvold itself would at best brick wall the Sphinx for a turn, and he'd still need to find something. So the way that he's playing it is specifically to try to be able to clear this board with Masculine Girl next turn. It also means that if more is deployed to the board, the Masculine Girl will still clear that. Easy mode here for Paulo Vitor Domodorosa when it comes to attacks. He just needs to simply send his creatures into the red zone. But then he has to try to figure out what it is that Glugowski is actually up to here. And it looks like he's going to Aether Gust the Gilded Goose. Does that work? If he has another green? Yeah. No, I believe he can, he can make a food here with it now. Yeah, and, and then it goes back on top of the deck, and then he can recast. And then play Massacre Girl. Correct. Interesting. And now I think that, that Paulo may be considering that possibility himself and may choose not to deploy the Sphinx of Force as a result. This is a sweet line from Pyotr Glukowski, recognizing that the way for him to get back is not just to haphazardly run out Korvold, but instead try to clean up this board using Massacre Girl. And he's trying to see if that will work for him. Yeah, Paul's trying to think of, okay, well, what, what can go wrong here? And he, he's got to think about a, a few things. One, one is, okay, well, what is he trying to set up? And what does this mean? Two is, like, there, there are uh, the... Ca uh, Casualties of war remaining, mm. uh, all of them, in Piotr's deck. So if you just played landed into casualties of war, what does that mean, right? Right. So the the worst case scenario ends up being that you get your board massacre girl. So that means you don't want to play this fix and force it into that. The uh, you know sort of second worst case scenario being casualties of war. You can still just get your opponent down to nearly dead, and. Uh, leave them in a position where you just play your second Sphinx of Foresight and they're in a rough, you know, rough spot already. So that's, I think the thought process here is the, the disaster scenario is that you lose everything to a Massacre Girl and uh, Paul wants to avoid that, thus keeps the Sphinx in hand. Now Glugowski is going in back into the tank himself. Of course, if you're sitting in Paulo's seat, you know, you're looking at that last turn from Glugowski. He makes a food token and uh, has his Gilded Goose ultimately on top of his library and back to hand. He had five cards in his hand and a bunch of right. mana available and just chose to do effectively nothing. So you know something's up. And Paulo, I don't know if you caught it, but with his cursor there, you saw him going, okay, food, called yep. him familiar. And he, that was him figuring out, do I lose everything to Massacre Girl? And he did ultimately decide, yeah, I do. Okay. And so now Glugowski's going to take a different route. Interesting. He's doing this this turn. All right, well, now this gets big enough that it actually stops the Cavalier. And this is, this is sort of an awkward situation for Paulo because yes. he played around the Masker Girl, which was there. Oh. Oh, but I think, is that just it? Yes. That's just lethal damage. 
the Cavalier, he's deciding, okay, well, I will scry. I think that one's good. Four, five, six. That has to get blocked on the ground. Wait, this Sphinx of Foresight only gets in for six, he, right? He, he hastes the Sphinx of Foresight in his hand with the Cavalier Flame. Oh, he can just do both. Yeah, he just plays both. Oh, God. Hastes and attacks both, and that ends up being lethal damage. Yeah, that's pretty easily GG, right? Uh, it, that looks like it to me. I think Paul's going to take his time and figure out, you know, is, is there anything that I'm missing? Yeah, what are we missing here? I, I don't know that we're missing anything. I think that, that Paulo is just uh, doing his due diligence. Because there is no mana available for Glogowski, right? Like he's all tapped out. The goose is summoning he, sick. Am I missing something? Maybe I'm missing something. Oh, there's a cat in the graveyard. Is there? There is oh, uh, there's there a is. cat in the graveyard. See, there was something, right? Yep. In the and, back and of our he head, there's have, always something. But he can, he can, can he pump twice? He can pump twice. He can pump twice. Yeah, it's still not lethal though because of the cat. Yeah. Right. Oh. The cat. The cat is in fact the brick wall here. <laughs> Somehow that cat. Man, I'd love to see the stat that for how much darn that cat, cat has soaked up damage-wise over the course of this standard. It's got to be upwards of 100 damage. There is a Cavalier of Flame hitting the battlefield. The second Cavalier? Does that do it? Gosh, does it? It no, feels it's like it's the same the, the thing. The creature that gets through is still the Sphinx. Wow, Pyotr Glogowski is hanging on by an absolute thread here. Now, the one thing I do want to zoom out on here, though, Kibler, is if Paulo does make this big play, Pyotr's still in huge trouble, right? He's chumping with two creatures. He's going to have to block well, something with Well, there's Corvold in play. And w will there still be? Yeah. Uh, no. Depends what it blocks. Doesn't. Because he sacrificed. Oh, no, no, no. It will yeah. only become a 7-7, seven, seven, right? So there's... Yeah, because he will... The only thing it can survive atta uh, attack from is the Sphinx. That's right. And that, that Clarion may look like it's good, but it doesn't do anything right now because Paulo can't play another spell. That's right. So he's going to give everything haste and plus one, plus O. Oh. So even if this does not win the game for Paulo right now, it looks potentially devastating. I wonder if he actually just doesn't attack. If he, cause he attacks with the Sphinx. I think he's like doing the math of what happens with everything. Because mm -hmm. he attacks with the Sphinx, and if the Sphinx is blocked by Corvold, yeah, because the Sphinx is blocked by Corvold, because Canister goes to oh. eight with the Cauldron Familiar. So can he die on the attack back? I think is actually part of what he's thinking. Right, and you and I have covered m many matches here with Corvold, and the answer is often yes, you absolutely can. It's hard to tell from this position. We need to know what Glogowski draws. Can, can Glogowski, y you can respond to the Cauldron Familiar with, by sacking again, yes. so you can actually keep it alive. You can. So he could, he could block the Cavalier of Gales, sack both his food to bring back the, the, uh, the Cauldron Familiar and keep the Corvold alive and attack back possibly for lethal. That's right. So, and Paulo Vitor, having just figured all of these things through, has decided only the two Cavalier of Flames are going to hit the red zone, which is going to prompt action here from Glogowski. He does need to block both. And and this is the sort of game that really highlights, A, how complicated the scenarios that come up with this Jun Sacrifice deck are, and B, how incredible a player Paulo is that he is working through all of these from the other side, right? Like, right. he doesn't necessarily know, you know uh, uh, everything that's in Canister's hand, but he identified the possibility of Massacre Girl. He's identified, okay, well, these are all the, the things that can go wrong. Uh, if he had attacked with all of his creatures, then the, uh, the the sacrifice of the food would have kept uh, Canister alive if he could if you could have just blocked everything, and the the second pump wasn't uh, available to uh, to guarantee kill the Corvo because he could do the uh, double sack to bring the cat back if he committed everything. Super super close there, Paulo Vitor almost able to take the victory there, but that little cat hiding in the graveyard was enough to keep Piotr Kogowski alive. Now the question is. Can Kogowski finish uh, Paulo off this turn? I and mean, he's going to need to kill both flyers. The big question is, can he Masker Girl? And I don't think he can. There's no more food. Yeah, there's no more food is the issue. So the, the cat can't keep, keep coming back. And everything else is way out of range of the two triggers that he would get, the one from Massacre Girl and the extra from the familiar. Now, if he could kill both flyers and get two more power on Corvold, he could win the game that way. I don't think he has that. He only has the, the one Murderous Rider to get through one of them. Wow, so close. He can Thrashing Brontodon to get an additional counter and a card on Corvold. And how many lands are in Hollow's graveyard for the Cavalier Flame? We saw him mouse over just a moment ago. 
just in terms of the, the damage that that will do. Right, that's always something you have to consider too, isn't it? No, he's passed the turn back to Paulo Vitor, who finds Sacred Foundry on top with his Sphinx of Foresight trigger on his upkeep. Now, Deafening Clarion also interesting here. If he can't win the game this turn, the lifelink that he could gain from it... He's leaving it on top. Now, he is wants this another red source for three activations. So he's going to clear away Cauldron Familiar and give all of his creatures lifelink, which is obviously insane here. And the fact that there's no food does mean that uh, the Cauldron Familiar cannot come back. He's going to have to hover in that graveyard for the turn. And then Paulo can play untapped Sacred Foundry and he'll have three activations of Cavalier of Flame. This is going to be a huge damage hit. Is it just lethal? I, I think that there's no real way yeah. out of this at this point. Because there is Murderous Rider in hand for Grogowski. But Murderous Rider means that he, t he does take two damage. He loses the two life from casting Swift End. Yes. And then it, the, the Cavalier of Flames are yes. the, the biggest creatures. If they're blocked, they die and then get the triggers for the damage uh from the lands in the graveyard. Funny, the damage on the Cavalier of Flame <laughs> that gets blocked by Bronton on is actually beneficial to Paulo somehow, as he wouldn't mind that thing dying at this point. Yeah, and there's the concession from Vitor. was an insane Oof. game one going to Paulo Vitor Domino Rosa. Boy, oh boy, this is some true top eight magic here as... Uh, yeah, that was a great game. That and, was a and, really intense, really intricate game. And I feel like the game was really well played from both sides. I, I think that you know, Piotr recognized, okay, I can set up this mas Masker Girl. Paulo realized that was happening, and he held back his Sphinx. Then Piotr said, okay, well, if you're not going to commit anything else, I go with the uh, the Corvold line. And then Paulo's still able to maneuver it into a win. Boy, I tell you what, if, if you want to get better, go back and check out the VOD of that one and pause every one of Paulo's decisions before he makes it. Ask yourself what you would do and then see what he did in, and you can retroactively look back and see why he did. He is so good. Yeah. Just being able to work through all of those things and come up with the correct answer at the end of it. And he started this game with the incredibly important line of mute you. <laughs> Playing against Canister, that, that has to be, you know... That has to be uh, plan A. <laughs> so we are two for two on that, by the <laughs> oh way, yeah. today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to get right into game number two here. And once again, the all-important Sphinx of Foresight for Paulo Vitor Domitorosa. As you mentioned before, uh, I actually did a, a deck tech with him earlier. And he said it was absolutely critical to this deck, mm -hmm. serving multiple roles in it. Here's Trail of Crumbs to kick things off. So it's Witches Oven into Trail of Crumbs for Piotr Gogowski. Not bad. Stuffable value engine all ready to go if he can find himself a cat. Yeah, he doesn't have a cat right now. And no. this, this is a matchup that specifically doesn't give you that much time if Paulo is able to find fires. He is going to, uh, huh, no fires yet. There is a Teferi. Teferi's interesting, though he can't actually play the Teferi next turn and uh, keep things going unless he finds a land. He only has two tap lands in hand with the Temple of Triumph and the Fabled Passage. But. A little bit awkward there for Paulo, but he still ends up taking Teferi Time Raveler in the hand before passing it back. We're going to see Mayhem Devil hit the battlefield, but again, he needs to, to find some stuff to throw into the oven here to really get the damage flowing. But still, a good start for Gogowski. It's hard to ask for much more than oven into Trail of Crumbs into Mayhem Devil from that deck. He does have the Aether Gust here, so he can send the Mayhem Devil uh, packing if he so chooses. Interestingly, choosing to bottom the, the hmm. uh, Shimmer, he still doesn't have a Fires, but I think that he's looking to, you know, maybe this is a, a game where he's not looking to dig for Fires. He's just going to play things with his mana on curve. Oh, sure. He's going to have his hands full doing that. He needs to find a third red mana source. He has a Fabled Passage in hand for next turn. 
And I think he's just considering what the best option is for this ether gust. And it does look like we're going to see the upkeep ether gust here from Paulo. Or the, the draw step ether gust is my guess. A uh, draw step. Allowing him to draw so he doesn't redraw the mayhem devil to play it immediately. Right. Otherwise, you just play it now. Because you know, then you give your opponent access to all their mana. The only reason to wait until your opponent's turn is to force them to draw a different card, then put it on top. Mm -hmm. So he's going to pass to his draw step, just as you said, Kibler. Yep. Ended up being a Gilded Goose, and now it's going to be Ether Gust. Just going to sack it. Does not want to redraw that. He wants to get a food. Okay, but now the engine... And specifically, so anymore. it was specifically he wanted to beanstalk giant this turn, right? So he wanted to he wanted to uh, end up searching his deck for a land. So he, he was going to get that mayhem devil shuffled anyway. Might as well get the food for it. Ooh, there's that mana source that uh, Apollo needed, the sacred foundry. A lot of food over there for uh, for canister. Oh yeah. Once he does find tools to allow him to uh, sack it for, for free. I mean, this, this goose is actually kind of an issue, right? Because the goose plus trail means that every turn, Canister is just, just sacrificing one of these food to, to go get a card. It means that every single one of these food is a legitimate resource. And uh, I think that we may see Teferi possibly just bounce it, even though it'll make another food, just to slow down the resource t uh, tr chain. And that's exactly what happens. I have a plan. Paulo Vitor buying himself as much time as possible, and he's done a pretty good job of it. Now he is set to just start casting these cards from his hand. Next turn, he can deploy Cavalier of Flame. Good old-fashioned way. Just cast it. Yep, the trail is leading Canister to some lands. Goose comes back. And, and this, you know, this is a situation that does currently favor Canister because he is actually getting uh, incremental advantages each turn here. Yikes. The Cavalier of Gale is not close to being cast no, currently. I am not making yeah, and this is actually an awkward spot with this Fabled Passage because there's double red, single blue. If if Paulo wants to be able to hard cast things, he needs triple of each. Yeah. So right yeah, now he, he could try and play out. Cavalier of Flame and, and go searching with the, uh, the discard ability, getting rid of some stuff, which is what I would expect is the most likely play. Um, but he does still sort of strand these other cards in his hand for the time being go discard them now. So he's got to figure out, okay, well, what of my hand here uh, is expendable? I would expect, yeah, the the Sphinx and the Gust, maybe the Justice Strike too, though there is that, that Beanstalk Giant off an adventure that could be scary if it's uh, able to come down. <laughs> Replaces Ether Gust with Ether Gust, but also finds a Shimmer of Possibility. And he does have a Cavalier of Flame on the battlefield, but this has been a much slower, less explosive situation here. And Piotr's really has been able to generate his, or set up his value engine now. Right. He also has the answer in hand, sort of, uh, for the Cavalier. I guess he's only got the one black mana source, so he'd actually have to use Gilded Goose, if I'm seeing that correctly. Looks like he already produced a black with uh, the Gilded Goose and then used the forest for the Trail of Crumbs, so... Yeah, I just mean he, he's going to have to actually, you know, use the goose to produce double black here for his uh, murder strider. But I guess it all works out when you've got trail crumbs anyway. Yeah, he's got a lot of a uh, lot of tools here, deciding exactly how to sequence everything. He can just play his beanstalk number two, and then play the murder strider on the back end. That's right. He's going to go get that second black mana source untapped here. He also has Fabled Passage now. He solved that problem nicely. And now the Murderous Rider in the form of Swift Dead is going to take Cavalier of Flame and send it packing. Does take two from the trigger, I believe. Yep. Another Teferi. Not super useful here. So he's I've just going to go dig in with another Cavalier of Flame, it looks like. He's got a lot of blue cards in his hand here. And he's going to get rid of almost all of them. Basically just looking for... Still no fires. His fires, yeah. Temple, though, might find him it. He's forced to play a, oh. a fair game here. And uh, he still doesn't have triple blue, so he still cannot play Cavalier of Gales. 
Oh, ca casualties of war. Hello. And casualties of war specifically killing uh, Temple a, of a blue source yeah. here, right, is, is a really big deal because it does can, you know, further strand not only the Cavalier of Gales, but even Sphinx of Foresight. And there's still the Thrashing Brontodon in Piotr's hand, so he can deal with a Fires if it does come down after this. So you, know, you could think, oh, well, you want to save the Casualties of War to deal with Fires. It's like, eh, not really. You want to actually keep your opponent off of being able to get an extra card with the Fairy, off of being able to slay their blue cards. Three damage does hit Piotr off of that trigger, but bang, bang, and bang. Land creature Planeswalker all down. Yeah, that Cavalier of Gales does not look like it's going to get hard cast this game, at least not anytime soon. Rontanon comes down, and ooh, there is at least a blue source, but that means it's just Sphinx of Foresight. No Cavalier coming down, so no more uh, deck manipulation available. Interestingly, you know, uh, Paulo has kept this Justice Strike this whole time. Yep. And just worried about Corvold. Well, the, the Beanstalk Giants, too, that are, that are mm. currently, you know, off... Uh, Gallivanting around the land. Mm, mm -hmm. Wow, look at this attack. Lagovsky getting attack? chippy here with the Thrashing Brontodon. And Paulo's having none of it. He just blocks. Lagovsky says, sure, I'll just throw the, <laughs> make some dino pie here. Gets a couple of food for that. And I think that that was uh, something about a do I have a mayhem devil in my hand bluff. But, mm -hmm. but one where Lagovsky was okay just sacrificing it. I mean, <laughs> that could get ugly if Paulo rips, you know, Fires of Invention or something. Yeah, that, that is a little suspect. But at the same time, if you're just looking to, to get some food to get your trail growing, uh, going, perhaps that's, uh, that's sort of the thought process. Maybe he'll just find another one. Yeah, big giant coming down, but there is just a strike waiting to kill it. This is going to be an 8-8 Beanstalk Giant, although it'll be a 9-9 for a short period of time, and then it'll be probably just dead. How many food do you get from a 9-9? Still just two? The same amount. Come on. Robbed. I feel like you should get at least three. Well, if you play Giant Opportunity, you do get three. There you go. So it feels kind of inappropriate that you only get the, the, the two for a Beanstalk Giant. I suppose it's a limitation of the oven itself. You can not you can only fit so much Giant in the oven at one time. Exactly. You've got to chop it up into bits. That's right. Mince pie. Well, interesting uh, little situation here, though, Brian. A, a second copy of Sphinx of There's Foresight off the, top, uh, uh, off the top of the library here. But also, Glukowski's down to six. Yet and it, he's going to be facing down two sphinxes. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. this is you know a, a very real clock, and Glagowski, you know, he has chosen not to use the the murderous rider uh, so far. He is going to sack, go digging, finds a cauldron familiar. That does start to make the life totals are a little bit less clear, at least. Mm -hmm. Cat plus a bunch of food in an oven. Paulo did decide to keep Fires of Invention. He figures, well, at least I can finally cast this Cavalier of Gales that I've kept in my hand all these turns. He was down to just one blue mana source. He's now reached his game high total of two. But Cavalier has been stuck in his hand otherwise. Meanwhile, is gonna kinda get the engine rolling here with the Cauldron Familiar, Witch's Oven, the Trail of Crumbs, and of course, this is the reason why you play this deck. Is that a second Murderous Rider? It is. Oh yeah. Well, that's going to make it extremely difficult for Paulo to come back here. Got to feel like Ugovsky can finish off if he can kill both of these creatures. Uh, there is fires into Cavalier of, uh, of Gales next turn, mm -hmm. and if that Cavalier of Gales, I guess you can't you can't hit a Cavalier of Flame immediately because you, that would be your two spells anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely a lot of options with this John Sacrifice deck that Piotr is deciding between. It has served him well today. He does know that the Scry went on top, which you know, has to suggest to him that there's either some sort of 
big threat coming or fires itself. And you know, sort of trying to prepare, okay, well, what's the best way for me to uh, navigate that situation, assuming that uh, there's some power card on top? Okay, Murderous Rider number one is going to send this Sinks of Foresight packing. And is he going to fire off the other one? Oh, yeah. Down to four life goes Klagowski. But he's got a Gilded Goose to follow up as well. So precarious life total for the moment. And well, we're going to see fires in the Cavalier. I mean, the strongest thing for Paulo to find is probably Kenrith at this point, thanks yes. to the trample that it also gives with the taste ability. He does get the draw three. Yikes. Finds. Oof. That's. That is brutal. That is not good. Yeah, he's going to get the castle. So he's going to have to set a stop here on his upkeep so that he can scry those two lands away. Because he doesn't have quite enough mana to activate Castle Vantress this turn. You know, we call that getting brainstorm locked. Yeah. Right? When you see the three lands, but you don't have any way to shuffle your library. Well, he's going to have to settle for a Oh, too. there's Big Daddy. Uh-oh. Korvald Faker's King in hand now for Piotr Gagowski. And that's the full engine I go. Although I do suppose he's short the Mayhem Devil just for everything. Shucks. <laughs> he'll he'll uh, somehow find a way. And uh, yeah, it does seem like he is cruising to the victory here with the double Witches of and Trail of Crumbs. Korvold and yes, Cauldron Familiar to go with his triple Gilded Goose. And uh, the value engine is strong with this one. No way out. Yeah, I don't. I don't really see a way now that Corvold has come down that Paulo can find a way out of this. He doesn't have any real board sweepers. He could find a Justice Strike to kill that Corvold itself, but the damage is already going to be done in terms of just the sheer amount of card advantage that Piotr is going to be able to uh, to generate here. So we're going to see the Scry two from Castle Vantress. Also, a hint at how Paulo's approaching this game. At this point, we saw him do a quick check of the clocks. He looked at the at the round clocks for yeah, the opponents. That's oh, Kenrith. oh, so that. But that's still at this point not enough. He can Kenrith no. and he can haste, but the the Corvold is in the way. The haste plus trample. He can put. He can't even put Kenrith in a position to like make a mistake at this point. Really, not though. Quite. Though oh, if Kenrith close. does somehow stay on the board, and you don't die. Maybe something crazy happens next turn, but yeah, when you have to play Kenrith and say go into an opponent who is uh, just ovening and corvolding you, does not feel good. Feels real bad. Glagowski now has, he has such an embarrassment of riches on his side with all those creatures on adventures plus everything else that he's got going on. He can afford to just start digging here using the Witch's Oven, the Cauldron Familiar combo with Corvold and Trail of Crumbs to just start find the specific things that he needs to finish the game. What did he find this time? Another, oh, another Cauldron cat. Familiar. And a land. But we're not done with this turn yet. Oh no, this is still just the end step. Yeah, this is end step on Paulo's turn, by the way. <laughs> he can do all of this again on his turn. That's Casualties of War. Hello. And he's almost running out of room on his screen now for the combination of his cards in hand plus creatures on adventures. It's kind of an embarrassment of riches here. Yeah, it's getting a little silly here for Glagowski, and I'm getting a little jealous, I won't lie. Once again, the Calder Familiar back on the battlefield. There's still a food as well. And frankly, in Paulo's position here, you're, you're sort of hoping that your opponent makes a mistake. Whether he you know, just strategically ends up screwing something up, whether he just misclicks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Might as well make him go through the motions at this point. Because this is a deck that there's, there's a lot of clicks, right? There's a lot you got to do, and you've got to do it in the, the correct sequence. It takes a lot of time to do it. You see that, that there's less than 12 minutes remaining in your match timer for, uh, for Piotr. And that is very much something that's on Paulo's mind. We saw him actually just hovering over the clocks earlier, as you yep. mentioned. He has 13 cards in hand. The maximum hand size is seven. You will need to discard five cards at the end of your turn. He also has four cards on adventures. So he's up to 17, you know, 
available plays to him at this point. And now this is this is certainly lethal damage with the Corvold at this point. But again, Paolo is just making him go through the motions and, and frankly just chewing up some of his, his clock. There's lucky number 15 there for Corvold. With no mana available for Paulo Vitor either. There's a Cavalier trigger finally resolving. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes Corvold. And there we go. One more permanent to sacrifice. And game number two goes to Piotr Gugowski. So. Super interesting match thus far, and we've got Paulo Vitor and Piotr both at a game apiece, and we're going to get a game three decider in our upper semifinal between these two players. Ooh, this is an ugly hand. That ain't it. Boy, geez, no Scrylands even? Like, there's just not a lot there, is there? Wouldn't be surprised to see Paulo Vitor mulligan this hand, which he does. Definitely a hand you have to keep at this point. Definitely. It's not something you're super thrilled about since you only have two land, but one of them is a Temple of Triumph, so you can dig a little bit further. I think he's deciding between Aether Gust and Bone Crusher here. He ultimately, he says, yeah, Aether Gust can go away. And now we're going to see Temple of Triumph looking for lands. Not good enough. Too slow. He needs lands at this point. He can't play Shimmer of Possibility on turn three. And he can. He could have, but <laughs> not where he wants to be. Oh, no, that's Oof. that's an excellent draw. Temple is about the best card in your deck right there. It is both a land and a way to find more lands. He's going to skip the Cavalier. He still knows that he needs to hit land drops for the next two turns to be able to cast Fires of Invention. And a land off the top of the library this next turn would be absolutely fantastic for Paulo. Trail of Crumbs kicks things off for Glugowski. And Ooh. he finds it. He can even Ooh. cast a fairy this yeah, turn. Fairy bouncing the food. Wow. Is, is actually very potent. You end up removing uh, the, the food before it's able to be fed to Trail of Crumbs. Ooh. And now this means fires next turn. Did you see Paulo kind of sit up in his chair there? Yeah. And thought, okay, that went exactly how I needed it to go. He can play fires into Cavalier Flame next turn. Well, no, he still needs one more land to be able to play Cavalier Flame. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, I guess he can settle for a Bone Crusher Giant. And he's actually just drawn two more lands, so he is not at all at risk of uh, of missing and not being able to play the Cavalier. Let's try this. Okay. I'm curious to see if he just plays the Bone Crusher or not. There's fires. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We go. He's just going to play Bone Crusher Giant. Can apply a little bit of pressure and can also protect Teferi. You see Canister rub his hands together. What is he going cooking over there? You see two copies of Witch's Oven as well as now a Mayhem Devil on the battlefield as well. So Mayhem De Devil plus the Oven here. He can sack the Cauldron Familiar to get a food, then sack the food to bring back Cauldron Familiar, both times pinging the Teferi if he wants. But it looks like he's going to save it. Okay. So Teferi gets plussed once again. Oh, Shimmer of Possibility the was the draw before. here. But Paulo has Cavalier of Flame this right. turn. And uh, he's going to be looking to dig for any other Cavalier or Kenrith or something like that. So let's see what he can find. Send uh, both of these pack in. And does he find another? Yeah, yeah he Sphinx. did. So Not too that's, bad. That's, that's good because with the Cavalier of Flame, you can give it uh, haste and get in for a big chunk of damage right now. He really did need to find some stuff this turn. And the Bone Crusher Giant's still there as well, and it's yeah. not small. <clears throat> There's another activation in the belt here for Paulo Vitor as well. So he's actually going to get in for a 12 damage here? Yeah, and this is really wow, that what this out. Fires deck is all about. It's about getting your Cavalier of Flame and some other threat alongside your Fires of Invention and just pushing the pressure so quickly. A lot of these Fires of Invention decks are, you know, they, they have their, their card advantage tools and their removal. This is not that. This is Fires of Invention into kill you as fast as possible. Yeah, it plays out like a combo deck. It's just 
I'm trying to assemble these things, and then you die. And uh, Canister's not quite dead, but he is certainly not in a comfortable position right now. Now he's looking to take 12 damage from Bone Crusher and Sphinx of Foresight. Bang, bang, down to seven goes Piotr Kogowski, and he needs to come up with some serious stuff next turn or he's done. He can possibly find a, uh, a Casualties of War, probably his best draw at this point. But you can't find that off Trail of Crumbs. What's his mana situation? He's only got five lands. Yeah, he'd, he'd actually need to find a land into uh, the casualties. And frankly, casualties alone might not be enough. Yeah. No more games. He is facing immense pressure here from the Hall of Famer, Paulo Vitor Domitorosa. Called him familiar back on the battlefield. Corvold, are you too late? Ooh. Probably not. This is a really interesting position because Corvold, huh. He need to if he corvolts and finds a land, so he can play the second oven and has oven like double oven cauldron familiar, plus the corvold. Then you got to feel like if he survives the turn, he could untap and have a hundred cards in his hand, right? And find a bunch of answers. But his mana situation is a little bit cramped at this point. If he does decide to deploy corvold, that that's it for the turn, outside of drawing a land off of corvold. Yikes. Super close position here. And Glogowski is going to finish off Teferi Time Raveler with Cauldron Familiar, assuming that that's going to get sacrificed to the oven anyway. So tapping it, not a big deal. Canister's clock also starting to tick. Yeah. It doesn't look like it's going to be super relevant here. This is really the critical turn sequence of the match, and he still has plenty of time. But if he does somehow survive the next, say, turn or two, it could become relevant. He could use he could use oven. He could play the second oven and then have the oven plus the cauldron familiar. He sacrifices uh, the, the cauldron familiar, mm -hmm. gets a food, mm -hmm. next turn, right? And deals one to the, the, the sphinx, sacrifices the, the, uh, uh, the, cal the food to the cauldron familiar, deals another to the sphinx, does it again with the other oven. Mm -hmm. After blocking the cavalier flame, he could survive that way. But now it looks like he's going for... He's going to sacrifice the familiar, I, 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 which would not give him a food. Right, but which means he absolutely needs to find an untapped land here. So that he can make that play that you just described. Does he find one? He does still have... Oh, no, he's, he's already... He's using his... Oh, he's using his oven. Okay, so what he's doing is he's using the oven on the, the cat, sacking the food to the... To the uh, Again, he's doing the cycle here to get multiple cards with the Corvold. He does still need to find the land. He did. Which he did. It is a shock land, however. Oh, boy. This is going to be very, very close. He is trying to mitigate this board as much as possible. Rather than concentrate on the Sphinx of Foresight, he knows he can get rid of Bone Crusher Giant this turn. So that's what he's doing. He's also buffering his life total at least a bit. Right. With each of these Calder Familiar pings. One more sacrifice. sacrifice uh, the trail. Trail of Crumbs goes away. He figures, I don't have time to mess around with that. So Bone Crusher Giant dies to Mayhem Devil Triggers ultimately. And if you look at the board, okay, we've got Corvold Faker's King. Oh, and he even found a Fabled Passage. Wow, he even found a way to get a, an emote in there as well. <laughs> fabled Passage? Well, this is, is this is, he, this is, well, the Fabled Passage triggers the Mayhem Devil. He right. doesn't take land, putting the land into play. He actually can, fa because he gets the Witches of, and the, fa the Fabled Passage, he can actually just send the, the damage to face here. It's not quite enough to kill the Sphinx of Foresight. Right. But he can actually just, and he gets another card from the Corvold. This is just an incredibly powerful situation now for Piotr. He was in an incredibly tough situation, but by navigating the various triggers with his Corvold in the stack, he has found himself in a very strong position all of a sudden. And Corvold Faker's King just does it all. I mean, we, remember when we were, like, saying he really, really needed to find a land off the top of the library? He found three. Yeah. 
well, plus he, another Corvold. It's like... The fact that he needed he need to find a land, yes, but he had so many looks at it because of all these things he's able to do to get those draws with the Corvold still on the stack. A yeah, potentially huge draw step here for Paulo Vitor, and he misses. Yeah, I, I, I think this is just slipping away from Paulo now because the Sphinx is outclassed by the Corvold. The Cavalier just gets blocked by the Cauldron Familiar. Yes. And next turn, this is the full combo. This is Corvold, uh, the Familiar, the Mayhem Devil, the Witch's Oven. Yes, he sacrificed his Trail of Crumbs. He doesn't need that. That's no. just an embarrassment of riches. This is just the power here of this full sacrifice engine online. And uh, you see Piotr pump the fist. He's like, all right, that means you didn't draw a spell. And that means that Corvold is wow. going to get the job done. Amazing stuff from Pyotr Glagowski and Paulo Vitor Domodorosa this match. This has been fantastic magic at the absolute highest level between these two players. And somehow Pyotr Glagowski has found himself in a position to win this game. He was so far behind. Yeah, he was in a, a super rough situation, but that Witch's Oven now he can use even more cycles of Cauldron Familiar plus Mayhem Devil plus food, plus Cat Sacks, plus bring it back, fire it the way through the Sphinx of Foresight. Every single sack trigger pumps the Corvold, and Paolo concedes. The writing is on the wall, and Piotr Golgowski will advance. Wow, incredible performance there from both players, but it was Piotr Golgowski who worked his way patiently through all of those options and ended up finding the win. Well done, Piotr. He went against against one of the best players our game has to offer. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe 